Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. I'm s guest today because everybody loves our podcasts when we have our, uh, our clients on that have taken this business to the next level. And we get to hear their stories, how the business has literally changed their lives. And it's so inspirational. And this one is going to be maybe a favorite. I don't know. What do you think, Scott Todd? Uh, this might be one of my favorites. And then we haven't even done it yet. And we haven't even done it yet. And by the way, just so you all know, I do have a co-host. His name's Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist in your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, learn anything, go to investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, are you ready for this? I am ready, Mark. I'm pumped. Today's guests are the land duo, Jen and Tyler Kelly. So if you don't know about Jen and Tyler Kelly, they have an amazing story. So which one of you are going to talk first about how you guys found us and your journey in to land investing? Uh, that's me. Um, I'm going to walk you through how we um, even first heard about land investing. So. It was kind of the end of 2017. We first heard about this concept and just, it really resonated with both of us. Um, we, we bought a course just to learn kind of the basics, like what a deed is, things like that. And um, we struggled through it, doing it by ourselves. We did acquire our first property in April of 2018 and we did everything the hard way. <laughs> And then um, it kind of proved that we both still liked it and that this was a good business for us. And we bought the toolkit almost uh, just over a year ago, October of 2018. And then we sold that first property last November. So it's just been a year. Uh, there was just a lot of content, a lot of value for us in the toolkit. So we, um, we did flight school as soon as we could get in. So the next one was December. Loved it. The first class we learned like a little nugget that seems so simple now, but was mind blowing. Then we did coaching as soon as we can could just in January of this year. And um, it's just taken off since then. So. Wow. Wow. Um Mark, did we lose you? Are you frozen? You're just like that taken back from the whole experience? I think we did. <laughs> so, you know, what? look, so one of the things that I think is kind of cool about this is that your story is that what happened was you went down this path. It didn't necessarily uh, uh, initially work out the way that you wanted it to, right? Like it did, but you didn't have success right away, right? Like you, yeah. you bought something, but then you didn't sell it, right? Like you know, you, you, and anytime you go down this path, there's a lot of fear, okay? Like, I know you had a lot of fear. And then you're like, okay, we bought a property. We kind of, we're kind of excited about this thing, but then how do we sell this thing, right? So like now, now all of a sudden, you, you're, you're meeting initial resistance. How did you come through that initial resistance to like keep moving? Because a lot of people would have been like, I can't figure out how to sell this thing. I'm, I'm out, I'm done. How did you, like, what, what happened? Like, what were you thinking? What were you saying to each other that really pulled you guys through to say, okay, look, there's something here. We're going to go farther. Yeah. So I think that for us, it was, we had just heard so many podcasts. We'd seen a lot of content of people that were successful in doing this. And so we just believed in it. We thought yeah. this works. We just got to figure out how to make it work. And it may seem a little counterintuitive that we, you know, sat on this property. Well, we didn't really sit on it, but we were marketing it for like six months. And then the answer was, let's go buy another program. But <laughs> for us, we thought like, let's get another perspective and let's see how, you know, another way that maybe we could do this. And by getting the toolkit, I think that it really got us way more aggressive in our marketing. It was like, we can't just put out a couple of ads and sell a property that we need to be all over the place. And I mean, just that one little 
change made the difference and got us that first sale. Right. I mean, one of the cool things that I know, like I know that like when we start flight school, I give a quote, right? Like I give this quote, I give it to every flight school. And if you remember, it's, it's, it's about success, right? Like, you know, I won't steal from other flight school classes, but that, that, it, that, that if basically if other people can do it, so can you. And I, I really love that about your story is that that's kind of the approach that you had. That's the approach that I had too. I would listen to Mark on do the podcast back when I wasn't really having the success that I wanted. And I would listen to the guests that he had on there. And I just kept telling myself, like, if those guys can do it, why can't I do it? Like, I would listen to Mark. I'd be like, if that guy can do it, I know I can do it. Mark, like, no, I think? I think I, yeah. I mean, I think if you look at my face and you're like, okay, this guy can do this. Come on. <laughs> like, not brain surgery. And, and it's true. There's, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about Scott. Um, well, maybe not Scott, but there's nothing really special about most of us that, you know, the, you know, the success, I think it's, I know for me, it's just consistency and just Kaizen, you know, these little daily improvements every single day. So let's rewind the tape now. You guys get out of flight school. Well, first of all, you start another program. Why Land Geek? Like, why not, you know, some other program? Like, what was it about us and, and our methodology that made you say, well, maybe this might appeal to us more? I think we wanted to scale it. Like, so we liked it, and but we just had one and we were afraid and it was a little bit more of an expensive property and we still made, we still doubled our money. Like our, our worst deal was our first deal, but we wanted to, to scale it. We liked the direct offers, things like that. So yeah. And yeah. the community. And yeah, the community's been huge for us. There's just, it, it's a very active community and people that are, have been very successful in the business. Um, but I think with the first program, you know, not to like talk bad about it, we got a lot of foundational knowledge, but it wasn't a full blown system. It wasn't the recipe. Um, and so, you know, we had this good foundation of how to do a deal, the mechanics involved, the different steps that are involved. Um, but we didn't have that end to end system for how to mail, how to market. And for us, that's really been the difference. Yeah. Like how to make it a business. So, right, right. So you, so you, you're in flight school and then what is flight school like? Like just that inside sort of scoop with your flight school class. I mean, look, just pretend Scott's not on the, on the podcast. You can just kind of say, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Whatever you, whatever you want. <laughs> no, it's good. It's, it's intimate. You have um, a call. It's basically feels like you're in a classroom and you never feel rushed. You can have endless questions and you, you basically are forced to walk through the process. So all those like stopping points of all the times you're uncomfortable, it's like, well, you got to do it by class time. So you just, you just push through it and everybody else is uncomfortable too. Like everybody else is learning. Um, so I think that helps just build your, your confidence that you're all starting somewhere. Yeah, yeah sure. no, I, uh, sorry. And, yep. and the only thing that I would like add to that is that, um, that, you know, we're still, we still work with these people. We still know yeah. people that are in our flight school group. Um, and some of them are doing coaching now. And so like you have like the, the course that's there and you're learning bit piece by piece and you're implementing and executing, but then you also have these great relationships that you're building too with other people who are doing the same thing. Right, right. So you guys are relatively successful, you know, in flight school, coming out of flight school. And then what sort of makes you think, oh, let's do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let's, let's really blow this thing up. I mean, I would imagine that that's sort of a scary next yeah. step. It was, but we had a, like an intro call with Tate when we were in flight school. And we just connected with them and he gave us this suggestion that was something so again, like out of our comfort zone, we wouldn't have done it, but we're like, you know what, let's do exactly what Tate says and just see what happens. And it just like catapulted us. And so we knew that if we had that one other person to check in with, to ask questions, um, cause the previous year, it wasn't that we weren't successful, but we had to do it three or four times wrong to find the best way. 
So now it's like, we can be like, hey, Tate, this is where we're thinking A or B. And he's like, okay, try B first. You know, like it just, it really cuts out months, weeks, years of trial and error. Yeah, I think that for us seeing, going through the struggle made us realize that we, we don't want to keep doing that. Like you don't have to. <laughs> like there's a better way. Like let's go find somebody who's been successful and has done this and learn from them. And I mean, it's, we haven't looked back and it's, this year's just been insane. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's talk about this year. So um, you started coaching on what day? And then I think you're, are you nine months in? So our first call with Tate was January 31st of this year. Um, so I definitely remember that. So last year and a whole year we did one sale. And then this year, We've done, done 80, over 80. <laughs> so We've done over 80 deals. So from one to 80. Plus, and we're not done. Like we're not slowing down. The year's not over, but I mean. The, the year's not over. Yeah. And then <laughs> what have been the results of those 80 deals? Like how has life sort of changed for Jen and Kelly Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, the, the business is just, been flying and it's been great. We've put in a bunch of systems. Um, and recently, as of last month, I left my full-time job to focus on this hundred percent. And the, you know, we're still transitioning, um, but it's just been so great. Um, I'm spending a lot more time with my girls and, you know, in my, my corporate job that I had before, it was, uh, you know, I worked at a global company um, and I was on a global team. So we were getting emails 24 hours a day. I was on calls at midnight. I was on calls at six in the morning. Sometimes um, like 3 a.m. You'd have to get on a conference call to talk to somebody else. Like it was nonstop. Yeah. yeah. And so I felt like I was just always on with my corporate work. It was just really hard to focus on my family and just having that time freedom um, is just incredible. It's it, it's hard to even put into words like how amazing it's been just those last few weeks. Yeah. Jen, what's it, what's it like for you having Tyler, you know, making this transition? I, I can see in his face, he's a lot less stressed out. I mean, yeah. it seems like six weeks ago, Tay was like, Tyler's really stressed. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I want to get on a call with him. But um, how is it yeah. for you? Like, what's that experience been for, like for you? Well, it was, it was really scary because we always had these really high goals and we thought trying to do it in a year or two years was aggressive enough, but we kind of got to a point we haven't um, completely replaced Tyler's salary, but everything is projecting beautifully. We cut our budget a little bit and it's just the quality of life. So since he quit, we've had our best months ever increased our passive two and three times what we have been. And it's just, I mean, literally after people would be like, oh, did, are you, did you get a tan? It was just like, it was just so much, so much happier, so much less stress. And it is fun. We have two little girls. That's what he says when we say our girls that we get to just share their time in. And I have a part-time job, but it's just kind of a dream to be working on this. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, Scott Todd, it's been a long time for you now, but do you remember being Tyler? and having those fears and that anxiety. And I remember kind of walking you off that cliff as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, point. it's, it's crazy. Cause for me, it's been like three and a half years. And, uh, like, you, you know, like when I found out my job was getting, you, you know, outsourced, like I told myself, okay, I got the land business. That's what I'm doing. And then your brain starts to kick in, right? The brain's like, you're crazy. You need a job. Like, you know, talking about like survivor's guilt, like everybody was having like meltdowns that, that even like the minute they announced it, people were, were like bawling, like, you know, like, cause they just lost their livelihood. And mm -hmm. here I am and I'm walking through there and I was in shock, but I wasn't like bawling inside. I was just like, okay, I, I got a plan. And then, you, you know, like right towards the end, I'm like, oh man, I'm crazy. I should be looking for a job right now. I'm going to miss the boat. And you, you, you know, you kept telling me like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And uh, like the story I love to tell Mark is like on my last day is as I'm getting ready to go out, I'm waiting for the HR interview. 
here you are. You're like calling me. You're like, dude, only a couple more hours to go. Life is going to be better. The air is cleaner. You know, the, the food tastes better. Colors are more vibrant. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And like looking back at it, I got to tell you something. Like, just like, just like they said, like the stress level instantly goes down. You would think that it would be more stressful to have your own business or to rely on yourself. But honestly, if you set it up right and you have the pa passive income coming in, and it's the passive income. Because if yeah. you had to wake up every morning and go after sales, like, I don't know, like realtors have to do. Oh, man, that would make me sick. Like, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I better conserve this. That doesn't sound fun to me. But knowing that I've got almost like a subscription business coming in where people are just mailing me checks, uh, coming in, money's coming in. It's like, okay, you know, I could have a terrible month and life will still go on. It might sting a little bit, but life would still go on. But the reality is, is that you do kind of go through a lot of mental things. Like I, I feel their pain because there's a lot of mental thoughts going through your, your head. Like this is a mistake. We shouldn't do this or what, or you know, like, this is going to be painful. And I got to tell you every year, every year since I've done it, Mark, every year has been better, man. Like every year is better. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I Tyler already made the decision. Like I was t talking to Tate. I'm like, let me talk to him. I want to convince him. And he already did it. But um, so Jen, like, did you, like, who was more nervous between the two of you, uh, would you say? Oh, I think it went back and forth. Like, I think I was supportive because I could see, you know, the quality of life change. But then we literally got that last paycheck, like that day, you know, like when he was done and it was, it was super scary and I, and I have a part-time job, so that's good. We have that consistency, but then it was just kind of a, like a mental shift, like a paradigm shift because we thought, well, we're planners. We didn't do this irresponsibly. Like we really thought this through and worst case, we stop all our systems, everything we're paying for, and we get paid like really well for the next two to five years based on our current passive, like Scott was saying. So when we did it that way, they're just. Yeah. Yeah, it made the decision a lot easier. When yeah. you start thinking about the exit strategies that you have, because you've built up a big note portfolio, you can sell that or you can just stop paying expenses and keep getting checks, you know? So it didn't, <clears throat> after we really thought about it, it didn't seem near as scary or risky as it did when we first were like, hey, what if I quit my job? Yeah. Right, right. So if, if someone's listening to this, what advice would you give them as far as, you know, I like to pick on Procter & Gamble. They're in the cubicle, Procter & Gamble. They got their health benefits. They got a nice salary, but they've got that long commute to work. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's just not purposeful. It's not fulfilling. They feel like, oh, there's got to be something better in life. I can't just keep living, you know, week in, week out for the weekends and holidays. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think Scott talks about this a lot when it's like you have to really be committed to to change. You have to have that burning desire to change. Is that's what he says, um, and I think that's how I felt. It was like we're going to make this work no matter what, and um, we took that mentality when we joined flight school. We had that mentality when we jumped into coaching, and you know if you really want to change and you really believe that you can do it then you can do it it's just like it's the consistency and i think it's helped having each other because when one person is discouraged the other one kept it going but we we've put in tons and tons of work over this last year but what's cool is i mean it really seems unfair because in the beginning when you have no time and no money you need all the time to get your business going and you need money and then it's like now we can just see that we're spending less and less time in the business but we just tried to do it like just one step at a time and just no matter what we're going for it and we thought we were committed and had great and then when we he put in his notice at work it was like there is no choice now like we have to do this so the ships are burnt yes that is there crispy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So looking back now, is there anything that you would warn people against? Like we made this big mistake. 
you know, you, here's how, here's what we would do differently now. Sure. So in the beginning, I, I mean, it, it would have been great to just started with this program and gone straight into flight school and just learned a system that works um, versus trying it on your own. I mean, we burn a whole year. I mean, that's a lot of time that, you know, if we would have had that year in um, doing it the right way, we would be way further along than we are today. So um, I think that this notion of like, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. I know that you guys talk about this, but um, we fell into that same trap. It was like, oh, well, we'll, we got this thing, we'll figure it out um, is one thing. Um, and then there are definitely easier areas to work in than others. Um, and we didn't really understand that when we first got started. And so we had this like, oh, we want to buy something that's close to us. So we were, we started in our own state. And I mean, North Carolina is beautiful. We've got the beaches, we got the mountains, yeah. like, you know, there's tons of land here. Um, but you have to close to an attorney in North Carolina. So it's way more expensive. And, um, it, it just wasn't a good place for us to work. So you definitely want to make sure that you're picking a good area. Yeah, Jen, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, I was just kind of just skeptical too, cause it's so new, you know, learning every part of this process. We listened to lots of real estate podcasts cause it, it was interesting, but um, it's still a completely different business from what we'd ever studied in school, our jobs the last 15 years, you know, so just um, just trying to do it on our own. Now it just seems silly because, you know, you went to, when you go through school, you have professors and teachers and things like that. So why not get someone that's made the mistakes to kind of guide you? So. No, no, absolutely. And it's, it's funny because we just finished boot camp and a lot of people after boot camp they're, you know, they're super pumped up. They're, you know, because they've just had two and a half days of land investing immersion, but they're toolkit people and they want to go out and they want to do it on their own. And, you know, part of me is like, go do it. Then the other part of me is like, man, this is so difficult just to, you know, have spent two and a half days and then think you're going to go out of that bubble and execute and execute and execute. Um, because we know the numbers, it's like, it's really, really difficult to do when you could just go into flight school and, you know, have Scott guiding you and saving you so much time, avoiding mistakes, and then ultimately, you know, having this huge ROI on it. And then once you see it, then you're like, oh, well, the coaching's just a no brainer. And I think that you are the personification of, you know, that journey of, okay, we tried it on our own, really, really tough went to flight school, Scott's a rock star, and then we're going to take this thing and blow it up into a big business and work, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, which, yeah. um, and, and see that sort of evolution of working really, really hard and then, you know, getting yourselves out of the business and really being entrepreneurial about it instead of it creating another job for yourself. Right. And you just kind of feel isolated because it seems like such a weird business to people. If you explain it to them, they are like no idea what land investing is. So that's why we even want to keep coming to boot camps because you go from no one doing this job to being in this community where everybody does this. Everybody thinks it's normal and it's just really encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um, the VIP room is, is pretty interesting. What's yeah. that like for you? Yeah, sure. So um, the VIP room is is really a lot of time to really learn from other coaches and learn from other people in the community. Um, there's a lot of time that you spend actually working on improving um, things about your business, different aspects. Um, so like this boot camp for us, marketing was kind of a big focus area. And so we got to ask, you know, Mimi, Eric, um, and Mike Zaino, every all the different coaches questions and we came out of it with a huge laundry list of action items that we're now working through it's just it's awesome. a smaller group of people and you kind of come up with questions you didn't know you had when you're hearing about other land investors journeys and what their pain points are and yeah, yeah. just that was our second boot camp and 
I'm I'm kind of the cheapo person in the family on the tie wide. So I'm like, like we did this like, you know, six months ago. Like, should we invest the money and go again? And then we came back and I was like, wow, yeah, we made the right decision. There's just you get so much out of it. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I mean, there's there's, there's so much, there's so much there. Like the the one thing that I was thinking about is, um, you know, like when when you think about like learning something new. I mean, we've, we've brought this up before. You can go do it on your own. I mean, theoretically, you, I mean, it's not legal, not legal, but theoretically you could teach yourself how to fly a plane. Like there are people that do that and they sit behind flight simulator and they just learn through the like Microsoft flight simulator. Okay. For years and years and years. Now to get in the plane, actually go do it. It's not going to happen, right? Like you're, you're not going to go fly a plane by yourself. You, you have to, you have to do it. And I got to tell you something. Flying a plane is not, is not complicated. It really isn't. What makes it complicated is understanding some of the background behind the things that you need to know and to look out for, right? Like, because gravity is kind of mean to you when you <laughs> fall from the sky, you gotta know what you're doing. And I think that, that land investing and what we do, our business is not hard. It really is not hard. The, the economics behind it are very, very simple. What makes our business hard is that you are setting up a business, right? Like you're starting from scratch from, you know, it, it's not like you're gonna go buy an apartment building down the street. You're, you're needing to put in infrastructure. You're needing to build systems. And one of the things that I remember from um, one of the Rich Dad books, I, don't, I think it was Cash Flow Quadrants, I think, is he talks a lot about systems, right? He talks about these systems. And he said that, you know, businesses are, really what makes businesses valuable are their systems. It's not necessarily what they sell, but it's the systems behind it. It's, or maybe it's Michael Gerber that said this is basically like McDonald's is not, doesn't have the best hamburgers, but what they have is the best systems. Okay. So what you have to do is you, you really have to understand that one, it's not like you're just going to go buy a piece of land and then sell it. That is the, the economics behind this business what makes it complicated is all of the things that we've never been taught, like the marketing or the sales or the accounting or the, um, you know, the, the pricing of the offers. I mean, these are all things that you can figure out on your own. However, it, to me, it's much better to have like that, that instructor that's there with you to help guide you. Who's done it thousands of times so that you understand like, okay, this is the shortcut and, or, man, I got to avoid the shiny object syndrome of, oh, let me go do this or let me do this. As opposed to like in flight school, we're like, follow the recipe. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. once you get done with it, then, then go make the recipe whatever you want, if you want to. But I think that's what makes the business hard. It's not that it's hard. It's that there's a lot of, you have to tap into a lot of skills that you've never either tapped into or never even learned in the first place. Yeah, that's yeah, so for you. And I think ahead, the, the shiny object thing was something um, that was a big help with coaching for us is that in, when you're starting a business, there are so many different things that you can kind of go and um, chase after. And like a real example with, for us was with Tate, we were um, wanting to try some new counties and Tate's like, why? You got a county that works. Like go deep in this county and, and keep doing what you're doing. You don't need, you know, five different counties to run the business. And, uh, and just little things like that are huge um, because he's right. You know, we, we stuck with one and it's, it's been really successful. I do have a question, Mark. I have a question. Go ahead. Okay. So you guys make the decision like you're quitting your job, right? Like this, you're going all chips on the table. I know how nerve wracking that is. <laughs> how insane was it for you to tell like your family, your parents or whatever, like, this is what we're doing. And yet they don't even, I'm assuming they have a, even a hard time even understanding what the heck land investing is. You might as well just tell them like, you know, like you're, uh, you know, just, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like I'm working. I'm quitting my call. job to, to work in the circus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it would have been the same thing. Like how do they, how do you tell them? Who did you tell first? You had to go to like a safe parent first. Well, that's what I would do. <laughs> Right, like I'm one of the safe parent first, who's always there to encourage you, and then you're gonna build up the like, okay, okay, now I'm gonna go tell the hard parents. Like, what do they say to you? Well, we 
we were going to see our parents in October. They don't live in North Carolina, but we had plans to visit them. So we were going to wait and do it in, in person. <laughs> and we, um, we, we, <laughs> we sat down with my parents. We went to the mountains for this little weekend trip. Wait, which was right are, after your parents, are your parents the hard parents or the easier parents? Easy, easy parents. Okay, easy. okay. All right. But I still prefaced it and I kind of practiced it too. I was like, you don't have to support us, but <laughs> this is something that we feel really strongly about and we don't, we just want you to know, you know, and we told them and they were like, congratulations. And we're like, what? <laughs> like, what is, but then they just said, they're like, you know, you guys are planners. I know you've thought through every worst case scenario. So you're young. Now's the time to do it. And that felt really good to like, we were like, oh, okay. Like, okay. Yeah, we can do this. And then, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope my mom never listens to this. Okay. Then my, so my mom was actually driving from Texas to North Carolina because she's got a house out here. So she stopped in the mountains while we were there. So she comes in a few days later. So I tell my mom and it was just like, oh. <laughs> what are you going to do about health insurance? <laughs> What's yeah, her health insurance. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, she, she knows that we're doing the business um, and she likes real estate, but she's more into like flipping houses. That's what she likes. And uh, so she doesn't really get what we do, I don't think. Uh, but she's okay with it. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of tested the waters a couple months earlier just as a joke and said, what would you do if we quit our jobs and did this full time? And she was like, I hope you're kidding. <laughs> so we knew it wasn't going to go well. But. <laughs> but I mean, like that, that is the funny thing, because, Mark, that is really one of the questions I think most people ask, because we are so ingrained in this corporate mentality that your health insurance comes from your company, which makes no sense, by the way. Like to me, it makes no sense. But that's a whole political movement there the, the reality is is that there's health insurance out there like mark's got health i'm not saying it's cheap but yeah. you can get it right like and everybody figures it out so congratulations to you guys and uh yeah. you, you do this for a little bit of time and it just becomes what you do that your parents will be like oh that's the coolest thing story ever so congratulations <laughs> to you guys yeah yeah so we're, we're recording this in november um, so what are you, what is your passive now? What's your goal to the end of the year? So our current passive is just under, um, we're like 5,600. Just under 6,000. Yeah. 5, and okay. at the end of the year, we're trying to get to seven. 7,500. 7,500. 7, yeah. Okay. Great. great. She just raised the bar on. Did you notice yeah. that? Well, right. in October, we increased it by over a thousand in one month. So it's doable. We just it have is to. doable. Yeah. It is. That's right. It should be, it should be 10,000 by the end of the year. Get on it. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Yeah. And, and you know, what was funny about um, this boot camp was how everybody showed in the VIP room. Now, if you don't know what the VIP room is, it's just the one-on-one -on -one coaching clients have their own separate room, their own separate training. But um, what you see is that the first year, is very, very difficult. And the second year, it looked like everybody hockey stick up their, their, their business. So my, my sort of in, you know, goal for you guys is number one, you're not gonna use your own money uh, on oh. deals. You're not gonna self fund. And then number two, you're gonna double your passive or triple it in year two. And then I'm gonna have a call, we're gonna get um, Tyler's mom on the podcast and, uh, you know, interview her like, what's it like? Yeah. She's like, it's amazing. And then, you know, we're just going to walk her through the numbers. Like you realize Jen and Tyler are millionaires in, you know, in one year, because how much money would they need to save to have that, you know, throw off your, you know, 60, over $60,000 a year. If you're like at 2% interest, you're like, Oh my gosh. I mean, what is it? Is it 2 million? Uh, 2% uh, obviously depends on the numbers, no, it, but right. Yeah. So congrats to you guys, but now we get to put you on the spot and mm -hmm. ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners 
to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. This story has been so inspirational. You're only into this nine months, already 80 deals this year. Next year is really going to be the big year. And um, so excited for the land duo. What do you got for us? All right. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, so we have a, a tool that we use. Um, it's called WorkAst, W-O-R-K-A-S-T. It's a weird name, um, but it's a task management tool and it integrates with Slack. Um, and it's free for up to five users and they charge um, a small fee per user per month. Um, but it's really nice so we can um, use Slack and set up tasks for our VAs. Um, and then when they complete the task, it'll give us a notification in Slack that the task has been completed. Uh, it also has its own dashboard where you can go in and see a task list or a calendar view of the different things that are assigned to people. Wow, very cool. It's kind of like uh, Process Street meets Slack. Yeah, kind of like that. I, that's what I love about Process Street is you, you can see your, your VAs and a checklist, like did they get yeah. everything done? And this is phenomenal and can't beat the price. Right. <laughs> so that's really good. Uh, Scott Todd, you have a tip of the week. I do. I do. I do. Yes. It's like the ABBA song I do. All right, Mark, check this out. Sometimes we need peace and quiet to like work. You know, like I'll tell you, when I had my corporate gig and we moved into a new headquarters, one of the things that they did was they pumped in white noise into all of the offices. It was like a dream come true because normally you could hear through the offices, but they like started pumping in this white noise and you couldn't hear anything. It was like being in a, like an isolation booth and I loved it. So I just gave you the link too. There's a, there's an app out uh, on the iTunes store called Muse, M-U-S-E, white noise. And uh, check it out because you can not only do white noise, like the, the, the normal white noise, but you can do like rain or thunder or wind or whatever, train movement, cruise, anything. It's pretty cool. I like it. Check it out. And it's free. Ooh, that's really good. I use a uh, PZIZ, but it's not free. It's like free for the first five, but it's like the, it's, a, it's like the app JK Rowling uses yeah. uh, to help her focus, but they have a nap piece and a sleep piece. Like if you have insomnia pieces is like amazing. Kind of walks you through how to get back to sleep. Uh, well, my tip of the week is, you know, learn more about the land duo. Is it just landduo.com? Mm -hmm. yeah. Check out their land, buy some land. Invest in, yeah. in the land duos, maybe, maybe email them. I remember just for fun, I think it was at boot camp. I was going th on Land Modo and uh, I like to try to negotiate with Jen. She's like, okay, I'll do that deal. So you never know, make an offer. And I would say that if you want to follow that path, you really owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family to really, because again, you know, Jen and Kelly have said it, we can always make more money. We can't get more time. And the training, flight school, the coaching really shortens that learning curve. So you can really accelerate your success in this business and get to where you want to be 10 times faster. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call and find out which program is right for you. So this has been phenomenal. I want to thank Jen and Tyler. Are we good, guys? We're good. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Scott, Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Just a reminder, listeners, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like Jen and Tyler, the land duo, is if you do us three little things. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the Passive Income Launch Kit, which is normally, normally $97 as well as the new wholetailing course, how to uh, double your money, 30 days or less, uh, buying wholesale and flipping retail. So please do that. Are we ready? Let's do it. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. That's, that, actually, that was really good. Let's get you guys on more. All right, Much I know you gotta go get, go get the girls. Thanks guys. Thanks. Bye.